behind. The silent herald of life and death, success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes the eleventh hour. Seems like you'll have to do a heap of running then. You're one of them carny folks. What's it look like to you, huh? <laughs> That's right, ain't it? That's plumb right. Is there any place I can get a drink around here? Yeah, yeah. Red Rock Saloon's still open. Uh, is it okay for you to drink? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there's a Red Rock Saloon just down the road a piece, so you can't miss it. Uh, 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 miss it. Well, thanks. Yeah. Mm. Ah, uh, them carnival people freaks all of them. Yeah. Strange folks. I don't like him coming to Red Rock. Don't have no use for him in a mining town like this. Getting copper out of the mountains, our business. Yeah, I'm not staring at them carnival folks. <laughs> Ships turned up separate to Lewis. He's sick in the forest, as deputies informed. Okay, Jeff. How's that number four tunnel going? Don't like it, Patty. Don't like it at all. Not enough shoring in that tunnel. If I told him once, I told him a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, I know. A uh, cup of coffee before you go off? Yeah, sure. You think with all the copper they're taking out of this mountain, they could afford to get more shoring timbers, huh? You tell that to the bosses in Denver. I put in a hundred reports, Patty. A hundred. Nobody cares what happens to us here in Red Rock. Hey, how long you been stewing this coffee? It's like molasses. Put it in fresh this morning. <laughs> Patty. Yeah? You ever get a bad feeling some days? What do you mean, Jeff? Like there was something going to happen. I got an itchy feeling down my spine. Same as I had that time we had an accident with a dynamite. I don't like it. Well, nothing happened today, did it? Now it's my shift, and I ain't got no itchy feeling. Now drink your coffee and get on home. Well, all I can say is this. I'm sure glad I'm sitting here in this hut and not working down in number four tunnel. Oh, <laughs> 
Tell me, what's so funny, huh? Go on, tell me, what's so funny, huh? You ain't standing where we are. Look, all I did was ask for a drink. Is this the way you treat strangers in Red Rock? You all think you're so clever, don't you, huh? Hey, listen, don't you go causing no trouble in my bar, you understand? Well, I wasn't causing no trouble. I, I missed my train, I came in here for a drink, that's all. It's them customer of yours that's causing all the trouble, Barkeep. Man, are you sure I'd have found you a stranger we haven't wet walked for many long years, you know? You take that back, you hear me? Ah, run away, will you? Why, you! Ah! Oh. Hey, you know I don't do no stranger. I'm gonna town living high up here. Hey, I don't want no fighting in this bar, you hear me? Hey, 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 and just look at all them busted glasses and chairs. Who's going to pay for them? Come on, now, who started this rock? He's taking the stranger. Well, look, Sheriff, that, that, that's not true. I. Well, who stuck the first blow? Well, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I guess I did, but... I, I... You got somewhere to sleep tonight? Uh, well, well, no. Well, then I think you'd better just come along with me to the lockup for tonight. At least you'll have a bed there and you'll be able to keep out of trouble. Yeah, but look, you can't arrest me. I'm not exactly arresting you, fella. Oh. I'm just sort of putting you under protective custody. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Nat Miller. And I wish in tarnation I hadn't missed that last train out of Red Rock. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. You in there alone? Yeah. But only me. I was working at the fix. Uh, oh, oh. How are you fixed? Uh, not so good. It's like I was in a room. My legs are slapped. I can't move. <laughs> There's what the falling all the time. Isn't I me? We'll get you out. Yeah. Well, you better hurry. It's getting cold in here. It's getting as cold as death. You hold on, Forrester. I'm going back to start organized getting you out of there. Hey, make way for the doc. Stand back there, you guys. Stand back. Yeah, Through into the tunnel, Doc. One of the men will go with you. You can't reach him at all. But you can talk to him. Okay, thanks. Teddy, how bad is it? Yeah, it's pretty bad, Jeff. A miracle he's still alive. What's the situation? Well, the main fall came between him and the mouth of the tunnel. It's, it's a, made a miniature cavern over him. Yeah. He's getting air in through a small passageway through the fallen rocks. It's only inches wide. Well, we'd better start working on them rocks, huh? We can get them loose. Of course, it'll take time, but... He's getting after that track there. Well, it will be okay for a while. Yeah, it'll take time. It'll take a lot of time. We wouldn't be able to use drills the vibration would start another fall. All the men will work with their bare hands if they have to. Patty, I just heard the news. Uh, hi, Sheriff. Bad, huh? Worst fall we've had yet. And Forrester's trapped. But he's still alive, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, the doc's talking to him now. He's only talking to him because he can't get to him. I knew something bad was going to happen. I just knew it. Patty, how far in is he? 15, maybe 20 feet. He's getting air in through a crack between the rocks. Duck's coming out, Patty. Right I'll set about organizing the men in the work party. Thanks, Jeff. Well, Doc? Uh, it's worse than I imagined. Yeah, it's bad. But we'll get him out okay. You won't. What? Oh, you may get his body out, Patty, but you'll never get him out alive. Well, why not? Well, it would be impossible for you to shift about 80 tons of jammed rock inside an hour, wouldn't it? An hour? Because that's about all the time I reckon he's got. But he's getting air in there through the crack. Oh, sure. It's not the air I'm worrying about, Patty. It's the rock dust. I don't understand, Doctor. Well, there's rock dust falling all the time. It's choking him. And he's not out of there within the hour. Then he's going to suffocate. Oh, no. He's a dead man, Patty. Right at this very minute, he's a dead man. There's no way out. None at all. Surely there's a chance. Not one in a million, Sheriff. That little cabin in there is going to become his grave. I'm sorry. 
There's just nothing that I can do, Patty. There's just nothing that anyone can do. Well, the men will work. You heard me, didn't you? Yeah. Doesn't make any difference how hard anyone works. Nothing's going to get him out of there. Nothing. You know me, Jeff. I don't give up until the last vestige of hope's completely gone. But there's no sense in fooling ourselves or anyone else. Forrester's finished. Nothing in this wide world is going to be able to save him. An hour. Only an hour. Not long for a man to measure his lifespan, is it? Forrester. Great big healthy bozo. Always singing and laughing. He needn't have been working tonight. He was deputizing for someone else. You can't just let him die like that. Alone in there and us not even making any effort to help him? Jeff, he's beyond help. Maybe if I was to send to Denver for some special equipment. Denver's nearly 50 miles away, Sheriff. Take him at least an hour to get to Red Rock. And anyway, what sort of special equipment do they have in Denver? Some gadget that'll shift a mountain, maybe? The doc, you said it'd be that rock dust that'd kill him. That's right. Well, if we could get something to suck up that dust... A vacuum pipe! Well, how are you gonna get it in there, Jeff? Patty, you saw how small that crack is. Just inches wide. A small winding passageway, 15, 20 foot long. Well, could a man squeeze him through there? Not a hope. Well, what about a boy? He'd have to be a mighty brave boy, Sheriff. But, oh, you couldn't send a kid down there. He'd panic. And you can bet your life that no father's going to allow his son to go down a tunnel only inches wide. No, it's out of the question. There must be some way of getting a pipeline in there. There must be some way. You're the miners. I'm only a doctor. The vacuum pipe is the answer. Suck up that rock dust and you stand a good chance of giving Forrester a longer lease of life. Then the men could start trying to dig him out. Working in shift to take him, oh, say eight or nine hours to shift that rock. Then it's hopeless. That rock dust will kill him long. Oh, I'm going to start that. him on the job. I can't just wait around like this. Every tunneler dreads being buried alive. But if it happens, he's got a right to know that at least someone's trying to do something to save him. Ringo, Josh, Ken! Josh, let's put the men up in the game! Now let's go! Jeff Wright. It's bad to just hang around. Anyway, it'll give the men something to do. What's the matter, Sheriff? You've gone awful quiet all of a sudden. Hey, Patty, let me go and have a look inside that tunnel, will you? Sure. You're one of the boys to go with you. You got something in mind? Look, right this moment, I got a feeling that I'm going plumb local. But I got this hunch. A one in a million chance. A million to one. At least so, it's odds, ain't it? Yeah. It's odds. I'll go ahead, Sheriff. Go have a look at the tunnel. Then tell me about this hunch of yours. <laughs> Still in there? Yep. What's he doing? It seems to me like he's measuring that crack. Patty Dilly! Hey, Patty! Yes, Sheriff? What is it you want? Listen, you get someone to set up that vacuum pump. What? You do as I say, you hear? Well, okay. Hey, Ringo, John! Yeah, go ahead that vacuum to your front I'll come with you, Patty! Come on. What's this all about, Sheriff? Look, look, Doc, I got this theory. It's crazy, and it's a million, a cockeyed million to one chance that it will work. But we've got to go through with it. Go on. Well, look, I measured that crack that leads into the place where Forrest was trapped. Like you said, it's only a few inches wide. But the way I figure it, 
someone who was, say, three and a half foot tall and built proportionately could get in through there. A small boy? Out of the question. Not a boy. A full-grown man dog. You hear me? A full-grown man. You've gone out of your head, son. Look, you remember that carnival show you had the other day before yesterday? Sure. All them side shows. You remember, Doc? I'll get to the point. Well, there was one that featured a midget, a dwarf. Well, what good does that do us, Sheriff? That carnival show pulled out on the night train to Denver. Yeah, that's right. But the midget missed the train, Doc. What? Yes, I got him stashed away in the lockup right this very minute. The guys at the bar were ribbing him, and he cut wild. He fixed the bill. And the way he was taking on them rowdies, well, he's got pluck enough for a man twice his size. Well, how tall is he? He's not three and a half feet, Doc, and he's built proportionate. Well, what are you waiting for? Go get him. Human nature's just the funniest thing. That's what I always say. The funniest thing. Just a while back, this town was laughing out loud at me. And now, <laughs> now when there's a matter of trouble and only a little guy can fix it, so everyone comes hollering to me. Mr. Miller, there's a man's life at stake. Mr. Miller now, huh? You know, an hour back, it was a squirt. I know that. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't let it bother you, Sheriff. I'm used to it. Only sometimes I get wild, like, well, like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I did kill, kick up a bit of a ruckus back there, didn't I? Yeah, you've got a lot of courage. Which is a sort of a roundabout way of saying that I'm going to need a whole heap more before the night's out, eh, Sheriff? Yep, I guess so. Well, this is it. I get everything fixed up, Sheriff. Good. This is Mr. Nat Miller. Um, he uh, missed the train. Now, you better come and have a look at the situation, Nat. Maybe you'll think twice about a attempting to go through with it. Oh, well, we'll see. But you pull this off, Nat. Mm. And the whole of this town is going to owe you a big debt. Well, I'll try. Well, come on, follow me. Okay, make way there. All right, come on, make way. Come on. <laughs> You can get through there, tugging a vacuum pipeline along with you. Oh, I don't know, Doc. It's a, it's a mighty small hole. Yeah, and it extends for 15, 20 feet. Could be more. 15, 20 feet? <laughs> That's what you think. I'll guarantee when I'm working my way along there, it'll be more like <laughs> a thousand miles. Then you'll do it? Yeah. It's the only chance this guy's got, isn't it? Yeah, well, you better strip down to your pants and shirt. Oh, and I'll uh, put a syringe in your pocket. Try and give Forrester an injection when you get to him. And I'll fix a lifeline for you, Matt. Uh, rope around your waist. Oh, well, won't be any need for that, Mr. Daly. Yeah, but... You see, I may be able to reach that little tomb down there, but it's a sense that I'd never be able to make it back. Guess I'll just have to swear it out with Forrester, that's all. Hey, don't you guys take too long digging your way through, huh? I promise you we'll go as fast as it's humanly possible. Okay. Now, Doc, if you'll just show me how that syringe works and where I have to stab the guy with it. Uh -huh. After that, I'd, well, I guess I'd better make a start, huh? Hitch up the vacuum pipe. All right. Nat's going on in. Right. Hold on, Forrester. You've got company down there. Go get him, man. Man, I never saw these guys working so hard in their born lives. Oh, he made it, huh? Sure he did. 
And now he's sitting down there with Forrester as bold as life, talking away to the Don 20 to the top. Uh, he's got courage, all right. And I had to go and throw him in the caliber. Man, how am I ever going to live this down? still alive. Is that vacuum still dragging out the rock dust? Working like a dream, Sheriff. It's strange, you know. Mighty strange. Huh? Well, if you stop to think about all this, Eddie, Forrester would be dead by now if it hadn't have been for Nat Miller. And Nat Miller wouldn't have been down there if we hadn't have had that carnival play in Red Rock yesterday. Yeah. And even so, he'd have been miles away if we hadn't missed the train. All mighty strange. Yeah. Well, hey... Hey, they stop digging. Well, what's happened? Hey, Jeff, why don't they stop digging? What's going wrong? Not a thing, Patty, not a darn thing. It's just we got through to him. You did? Yeah, ring with a couple others that gone in to get him out. Could have been me in there, trapped. Yeah, believe me, I I know just how it feels. Hey, here comes the doc. Hey. What's the news on Forrester, Doc? Yeah, doc now. Boys, he's out of danger now. Oh, oh you're good. Well, 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 I talked for a while there. He might have contracted pneumonia, but I managed to save it all. Yeah, he's going to be all right. Hey, barkeep, uh, pour me a drink, will you? Here's your thing, Doc. I want to drink a toast. The man that saved Forrester's life. You know something? Matt Miller. It's, it's frightening. That's what it is. Frightening. What is? Well, the way it all panned out. I mean, well, when you get to thinking about it, Matt Miller shouldn't have been here anyway. He should have been on that train on his way to Denver. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been given the thing a lot of thought. How come the tunnel collapsed the night after we had a carnival playing right here at Red Rock? And remember this. No one else but Nat Miller could have gone down that hole. Why, maybe nobody in the whole state of Colorado. Yeah. And there's a million and a quarter souls in the state of Colorado. Yeah, it sure does make you think. Yeah. Say, how come you missed that train anyway, Nat? I said, oh, well, ordinarily the Kearney folks had checked to make sure everyone's aboard. They, uh, they didn't miss me. <laughs> I guess I was so small, I could overlook somehow. Hey, barkeep, okay if I have a drink, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nat. for another mounting drama of action and suspense when we again present The Eleventh Hour. 